Today we're going to kind of continue our discussion of uh, continuum linear elasticity theorem and today we're going to get into how do we figure out what's the stress rate at some arbitrary rotation. So um, this is going to be an actually a unique video. It's going to be a kind of a two-parter. So this first one we're just going to kind of go over the theory, introduce some kind of uh, equations and kind of introduce you multiple ways you could solve this problem. Um, so again, whenever you're solving um, these you know mechanics problems, you can solve them any of the ways that I'm going to show you. Now, um, I'm going to suggest kind of one particular method um, because it's kind of, uh, at least for me, it's the way that I like to, um, it's the way that I can solve these problems uh, easily and I don't have to kind of memorize equations. You can kind of uh, use this kind of graphical method. But again, um, you use whatever method works for you and we'll kind of get going. So uh, you are now all experts in uh, thin-walled cylindrical pressure vessels. So we talked about that a lot uh, last time. You know uh, basically about the hoop stress, the longitudinal stress, so hoop, longitudinal. We know that hoop is going to be twice our longitudinal here. We also know how to describe um, using this expression over here. So F1 I J is equal to 1 over E times, uh, excuse me, undo that really quickly here. Uh, let me erase that this is equal to, let me get back here, uh, 1 plus, a little thicker, 1 plus nu sigma ij minus nu sigma kk, our chronic delta. So we know how to write strain for any kind of arbitrary uh, in our kind of coordinate system that we've been using previously. One, two, three. Any type of stress that we kind of apply to uh, this representative Q element. So you're experts on all this material. Now, uh, and we know kind of how to do our uniaxial uh, testing, how to represent uh, stress and strain in kind of tensor notation, uh, as well as your stress strain curve. But I want to kind of pose a question to you because typically when we run our stress strain curve, um, for example, so if we want to generate our stress strain curve, we typically do a kind of uniaxial tensile test and we generate this curve, you know, here until it fractures. Now, what if, for instance, I was interested, like, uh, I wanted to kind of rotate my sample, or I wanted to kind of see what is the stress straight if I cut out kind of this piece here at some kind of rotation or some angle theta, some arbitrary rotation. I want to see how does that material respond to stress if I kind of pull uh, in this, along this kind of new direction uh, over here. What is that new stress straight, you know, in this direction? Now, why is this important? Well, uh, lots of times in your kind of mechanics problems, you know, it's not as simple as, you know, kind of this, this loading state here. Uh, often you're going to have, you know, again, some type of stress state or you're kind of interested in the stress state along, you know, some arbitrary rotation. Um, so this happens a lot with, um, if you kind of basically uh, produce single crystal silicon um, for kind of metal processing as well, you know, uh, basically how does it respond to stress along a certain direction is really important. So understanding how we could kind of relate or kind of measure the stress rate at some arbitrary location is important. You're not going to basically kind of turn your sample in your instaron and kind of measure for every single angle what theta is. We're going to introduce basically a simple, uh, not simple, but uh, a series of equations and a series of methods where if you do this test and you get the stress strain curve and you get your stress tensor, which we'll just write again uh, because it's been a little while since we uh, posted a video. Uh, let me erase right here. Let me go back. We know that this matrix is symmetric. Two, two, sigma two, three, sigma one, three, sigma two, three, sigma three, three. We know once we had this stress state, we from this from this simple you know from this loading system here, we could figure out at any kind of uh, rotation or any angle theta how this new stress state will change along this new coordinate system. So how will this new stress state at some uh, angle theta, how will it change? So there's lots of different ways uh, you could kind of resolve stress uh, on this new plane of interest right here. So one of the first things you could do to kind of uh, figure out what is that series of equations is you could kind of use this kind of thought experiment. So I have this, uh, here is my stress tensor for this problem. So I have some stress on the x, x direction. Uh, you know, again, I use, um, this could be also one or two, uh, as usual, uh, again, any arbitrary state, but I have some positive tension in the x, x direction, 
I also have tension in the yy direction. And I also have the shear stress tau xy. I know it's shear because it's tau. I know this value here. And everything else, I can't see any stresses, so it's zero. What type of special stress state is this? We've talked about it previously. All the stresses are located in one plane. There's no z indices, so it is plane stress here. Just a reminder. So, how can I figure out now what is the stress state? You know, so this is the stress state in my original coordinate system. So this is my stress state in kind of x, you know, kind of y coordinate system. I want to figure out what is the new stress state at this kind of new coordinate system here. You kind of see them. Uh, x prime, y prime. So I'm going to rotate to this new coordinate system some angle theta to get from here to this new, this sigma prime. Uh, so what we're kind of going to do on here. Uh, excuse me, that is my phone. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, anyways, uh, we are going to kind of figure out and try to get to this kind of transformation. So one of the ways you could do this is just kind of cut out this representative volume element here. So you make a cut at some angle theta, and you kind of take that slice out from this representative, this volume element, or this kind of uh, piece here. So we cut out our piece, and then you resolve these series of kind of forces here. So once you cut that piece out, you know how to do free body diagrams. You're all, you know, you pass statics. You're mechanical engineers. You're the statics experts. I'm just a lowly material scientist. I'm not good at this stuff. But <laughs> I, uh, you know from statics how to kind of resolve um, kind of these uh, free body diagrams. So once you cut, cut that material out, you know that the forces, we have static equilibrium. The forces in the new direction, x prime, have to sum to zero. So we know that stress as units of what? Newton per meter squared. So we need to, if we want to get the force, we need to do uh, our stress times area. And so you can see that kind of here. So sigma yy times a sine theta. Again, we're writing all these stresses in terms of a new rotated coordinate system. So in terms of this angle theta. So I know you're all status experts. You're, you know, you could easily do this in your sleep, right? On an exam, you could easily do this if I, I give it to you. You know that the stresses in the new x prime direction are uh, this, 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 trivial, right? You can do this in your sleep. No, no, it's really, really difficult. <laughs> uh, and it's incredibly difficult. Uh, and I'm going to show you why you don't want to kind of solve uh, mechanics problems in this way. But again, we're going to get to a series of equations by kind of doing the same thing. So we're going to sum the forces in the x prime direction. We're also going to sum the forces in the y prime direction, set them equal to zero. And we're going to get a series of equations that we're going to see right here. So lots of trig, lots of, uh, again, this is just math. Uh, I am not going to kind of show this to you because, again, you know, if you're interested in derivation, we can kind of go uh, through it together. But these are kind of your resultant equations. So, again, this is how I can get my new stress tensor for any arbitrary rotation theta just from our previous uh, kind of stress values here. So all we do is plug in theta. What is our arbitrary rotation? And you're good to go. You can transform any coordinate system, and we're going to kind of see this in a second. So this is great. Um, however, uh, lots of times we're interested in kind of, you know, so this will show what stress is as a function of theta. But we're interested in where materials are going to fail or where materials are going to yield. That's going to occur at values of maximum stress here. Um, for ceramics, brittle oxides, glassy polymers, that's going to be at maximum normal stresses. So when is our normal stress, when is this maximized? For metals and composites, it's going to be typically fail at the maximum shear stress. So where is tau maximized? Well, how do we figure out what is our theta that maximizes our shear and our normal stresses? You heard that term maximum. I know we've talked about this enough times in class. If you hear maximum, how do we solve and figure out what is a maximum? You bet, you got it. We are going to take the derivative. Uh, <laughs> we're going to differentiate uh, with respect to theta, and we're going to set that value equal to zero, and we're going to find what is theta that maximizes uh, both tau max. So, what is that theta value, and what is our uh, stress, our normal stress max function of theta? So, to find the maximum or the principal stress state, the maximum normal normal stresses. So, this is for maximum normal. We're going to use this equation. 
So again, we're solving for what is the theta that gives us our maximum normal stress state. That's called your kind of principal stress state. Uh, and once you kind of, you know, substitute back in and put this over here, uh, the tan through theta is, uh, will give you these values. Where sigma one, you can see sigma one is always gonna be larger than sigma two. So these are our principal maximum normal stresses. Uh, you can do the same thing for shear stresses and get this value excuse me, right here. So this is great. And it's a nice way, again, you know, as long as you, you know, you're really good at statics and you could kind of do this uh, kind of sine and cosine and derive this uh, and or memorize these equations, for example, uh, <laughs> memorize these equations instead, uh, you can solve problems like this. But if you're kind of on the job side or you're trying to do a, uh, you're trying to do a, a dare, you know, a back of the envelope calculation or more importantly, if you're in an interview, are you really confident that you can memorize this expression and solve these problems? I know I couldn't. Um, so this is why I want to introduce you to a um, concept that you'll hear and you probably hopefully you've already heard about already in mechanics courses, uh, and that is more circle. So there is a graphical way where you could figure out what is my normal stress values? What is my, uh, what is the theta that maximizes my normal stresses? What's the theta that maximizes my shear stresses? Or what are the max, what is my stress tensor in some new arbitrary rotation? So Otto Moore was a German engineer uh, back, I think, in the 1800s. Uh, and so he was, when he was kind of going through these equations, he recognized that it had a very, very similar form uh, that we've all seen before, but probably forgotten. And I know that I definitely uh, forgot. So again, Moore circle, Otto Moore, German engineer, 1800s. Um, so he saw, if we, he did, you know, he basically kind of rearranged some of these equations. You can kind of, again, see the derivation uh, a little further in the notes and go through it if you want. But he rearranged these equations and saw this has a very, very similar form to an old equation that you've uh, probably forgotten, and that is the equation of a circle. So Otto Mohr, Mohr represented essentially the, any given stress state. So if you have a stress tensor, you can represent the, all the different, uh, you know, again, the transformation of theta to theta prime as a function of theta, you know, uh, excuse me, sigma. So you could transform your original stress state to your new. This is original. This is your new, new stress state. You could transform from your original to your new stress state just graphically by looking at kind of that uh, equation of a circle. So what Moore found was, all right, if I have an original stress state, I could find uh, the center of my circle is going to be, so the center is going to be equal to just your normal stresses. So again, assuming we still have that uh, plane stress state. So assuming that this is our initial stress state, where we have, again, sigma xx, sigma yy, tau xy, tau xy, and then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, all right there. So our center is just the normal stresses divided by two. The radius is right here. I'm not gonna use LaTeX. Don't draw it out, Josh. <laughs> so uh, now, once you have that, you can start to draw basically your circle. So you can plot um, the, your, typically it's done, your shear stresses in this axis, your normal stresses here. Assuming that, um, well, just, uh, I'm gonna just assume that sigma xx is larger than sigma yy. What you do is you start to plot coordinates. So uh, the coordinates in this graphical system would be, so if this is my sigma xx, and this is my sigma yy, and let's say my tau xy is right here, I have coordinates here and here. Also because of spherical sy uh, symmetry, or uh, excuse me, um, circular symmetry, I know I'm gonna have a corresponding value here where my circle here, here, is gonna pass through all of these points. And again, the center of my circle is gonna be given by this equation here, so that's my center. And my radius, I could either remember this expression or I could actually draw a line and figure out what is this radius value right here. And from that, we can figure out, okay, what's the rotation to get me to my stress state where I only have normal stresses? Or what's the rotation that's gonna get me to where I 
have my maximum values of shear stresses. So we're going to do that a little bit more, uh, and it's actually easier once we kind of do this example. We can actually really kind of figure out and find, uh, essentially, and show you these values kind of quantitatively. And we'll show that the values match. So whether you do the first method or the second method or the third method I'm going to introduce here in a second, uh, you'll be able to kind of see what I'm talking about. Now, I just mentioned a third method. So many of you probably have not taken linear algebra, but there is a third method to transform our original stress state to our new stress state using linear algebra and transformation matrices. So our rotation matrix or our transformation matrix is given by this value or this uh, matrix right here, T. So where C is cosine theta and S is sine theta. We can resolve, I could do this transformation or I could figure out my new stress state just by performing this operation right here. That's all I have to do. So if I ask you to figure out what is the new stress state at a, at a given value of theta, all you would have to do is plug this into Mathematica and solve. Trivial. Once you have the code written, it is straightforward how to kind of get to the next uh, point here. You can also do the same type of uh, rotate. We haven't really talked about strain yet at all. But you can do the same operation for strain. The only problem is it gets a little bit complicated because of this kind of Reuters matrix. Um, we have to introduce this Reuters matrix because as we saw in the infinitesimal strain theory, we have to account for this difference between our tensorial definition of strain, so our tensor definition, versus our engineering definition of strain, and specifically shear strain. Engineering, I'll put that shear. So there's a kind of this, uh, basically, it's first you transform, you know, you introduce the Reuters matrix, because first we want to kind of uh, go to our tensor form, then do our rotation, and then convert back to your tensor, uh, your engineering definition of strain. But um, this is a little bit beyond, but again, it's the same idea, but we're going to work a lot with this guy right here, because it's just much more straightforward. So there's three ways to check your answer on any mechanics problem. So as you go through the problem set, Solve them all three ways. Get used, you know, double check your answer. Make sure you're confident in kind of what you're working with. And again, on an exam, do the same thing. If you get all three answers the same, you're either incredibly lucky or you're doing the problem correct. So um, that's kind of my advice. Uh, that's a lot of equations and a lot of kind of uh, derivation to take in in one video. Don't worry about it though, because uh, to me, this all comes together once we start to kind of solve the problem, uh, solve the problems and actually look at this stuff and what's happening uh, kind of graphically on Mathematica. So. We'll deal with that in just a uh, bit, but yeah, that's it for today. So uh, hope everyone's doing well. Uh, soak that in and we'll get to kind of the fun example next time. See you all a little bit later. Bye.